Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial on getting started with the texture emitter. So in this uh, section here, we're going to be talking about uh, using some functional examples here. We talked about the uh, popcorn effects learning samples under your particle uh, folder. We're going to be looking at some of the functions and their relevant applications. And then we're going to be deconstructing some of the applications to customize them using the concept we learned uh, concepts we learned with the functions. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is under emitter settings. We're going to take a look at this one here called initial speed. All right, so I'm just going to click, double click that and bring it into my project. Use the W hotkey because it appeared below my uh, ground plane here. And there's our dummy. All right, let's press Shift S to simulate this it's right off the bat. All right, so we have a number of different arrows just shooting off from this dummy. Now the attribute that we're going to take a look at here is of course under the popcorn effects tab. Uh, at the top, under emitter settings, this section right here, and I just minimize all of those for now. And uh, emitter settings right here, we have initial speed. Okay, we're going to be talking about initial speed and initial speed randomness. So right now, the initial speed, it's basically the speed that your particle starts to emit at. So right off the bat is the speed, speed that it has as it appears. If we change this speed to something like a higher value, you'll see our particles will have a much faster, higher speed. We can tame that down a little bit and so on and so forth, all right? And we can also change the initial speed randomness. If we increase that, then we're gonna have some that lag behind a bit more, okay? Some that, you know, like this one here, lags behind a bit more and others that go off a lot faster than the others, all right? So a bit more distribution uh, with the initial speed of our objects, our particles rather. If we change that to a lower value, you can see they'll, they'll you know, emit all um, at the same time. Okay, so let's just change our initial speed to like a lower value, maybe 0 0.5. And let's see how a gravity affects this. So gravity can be found in the particle settings down here under force. You'll find your gravity right here. If we change our gravity to a higher value, like maybe a value of 1, for example, you can see we'll start off with an initial slow speed and it'll increase as we get higher. You can pump that up to maybe a value of 10. You can see you start off with a really slow speed, and then it just, zoop, the gravity just kind of sucks it up into the atmosphere. All right, so that's basically initial speed. We'll talk about emit intermittence. That's a hard word to say in just a moment here, all right? So let's shift S to end that simulation, and let's take a look at a real world, real world example here uh, by going to Applications, Texture Emitter, and at the bottom we have a welding spark example here. Let's bring that up so we can take a look at it. Shift S to simulate. All right, Wildings, welding sparks are shooting off like this. If we go to our initial speed uh, randomness, you can see that we have uh, quite a high value of initial speed randomness, which is indicated by the area here. It's a larger area in which the sparks are falling. If we change that to a lower value, you'll see it'll be, be a bit more concentrated. However, we still have an effect of wind and stuff like that. And uh, emit intermittence is, like I mentioned, if we uh, change our initial speed to uh, a lower value, uh, you can see we can, you know, um, have a lower emission, uh, initial speed. A higher initial speed will kind of create almost like a shooting star type effect, okay? Um, so keep that in mind, a fairly simple example. Now, I promised I'd talk about emit intermittence. If you have your emit intermittence at a higher level, basically it just increases the intervals between the uh, emission of your particles, all right? Intermittence emission, there's all these mission, mission, mission words. All right, so a pretty simple example. If you keep this emit intermittence down to zero, we're going to have a steady stream of welding particles shooting off. You can just kind of, you know, move those around if you want. So you can, this can be used in a number of different examples here. Uh, I like to kind of have a lower initial speed and something like this, maybe be a bit more accurate for uh, actual welding particles. Okay, so that's a good example of how initial speed uh, can be used in a, in a uh, one of the applications here. I'm just going to delete that uh, dummy there, and we're going to move now to lifetime. Uh, so I'm going to go to particle settings this time, and we're going to be talking now about the initial, where is it, the uh, clock here, life, minimum, and maximum, all right? And let's bring that example in. So this one here, if we shift S to simulate, is a simple clock. All right, now it's a sprite. This is actually using a sprite atlas, which I'll show in just a moment here. If we go to our popcorn effects tab uh, into particle mode here, you'll see that in particle, we have the sprite sheet or the sprite atlas right here. And in particle mode, we have blend mode additive, which means we're using this one right here, okay? 
And 8x4 Sprite Atlas indicates we're using this 32, 8x4 is 32, additive Sprite Atlas, which is in the diffuse channel right here. So if I start that stop that simulation and I just load this into Photoshop here, you can see we have this set of 8x4 sprites in our Sprite Atlas, okay? And we have a little bit of a black area here since there's only uh, 24 uh, positions on the clock here. All right, so it's going to be a little bit of a blank spot in the uh, emission of our uh, particles. So let's go back to uh, um, the iClone here. All right, so let's uh, shift S to simulate that one more time. And let's take a look at these values under particle settings called life, minimum, and maximum. So right now, this clock is appearing every two seconds. We have it set for two seconds. It'll disappear and appear again every two seconds. However, if we change that uh, maximum value to maybe a value of 10, it'll choose a random number between 2 and 10. You can see the clock is moving much slower. So this one will appear on the screen for maybe 8 seconds, okay? And this one maybe is going uh, 6 seconds. If you want that to be consistent, then you can actually change your values to uh, the minimum and maximum values to 10. Okay, so now this will be 10 seconds on the screen every single time. If we wanted to randomize that, let's go back to maybe a value of 2 here. And let's uh, allow ourselves to have more clocks on the screen at once using our uh, quota. Let's maybe have a value of uh, you know, have 7 clocks on the screen at once. We need to increase our volume on our Y and Z axes, maybe to a value of 100 or so. All right, so now each one of these clocks is appearing, and it's going to be going at a different pace, as you can see right here, because they're randomly generating at a different uh, maximum lifetime. All right, it's our minimum lifetime. Uh, maybe let's increase that to like 200 or something because they're kind of a little bit too small. All right, so you can create a kind of a cool dramatic uh, clock effect like this if you want it in your project as the clock turns. All right, so this is kind of a quick example there of how life minimum and maximum will affect your project. Uh, so let's go take an example of that um, using our one of our applications here under Texture Emitter. There's a cool looking Tetris example here. Let's just double click that. And uh, I'm actually going to uh, shift S to simulate this here. There's our falling semi transparent Tetris uh, particles. Um, let's actually just make our lights, turn our lights off in the scene here. All right, and uh, shift S to simulate one more time. Oops, let me make sure I select our Tetris emitter there. All right, so now we have these glowing Tetris blocks. We can even make them glow further by going down here and using Exposure Bloom. And just kind of uh, pumping those up. And uh, again, we are using the same Sprite Atlas, 8x4 Sprite Atlas, using the additive uh, function, or blend mode rather. Let's just uh, uh, load up that Sprite sheet in Photoshop so you can see it one more time. Okay, so this one's just using your typical standard Tetris blocks. All right, so let's go back into uh, iClone here. And uh, S, Exposure Bloom, there we go. Cool. So now we have some more bloom from our blocks. We can even just uh, increase the amount of, if we go into GI settings at the bottom here, to our add additive too, we can increase the amount of glow that each one of those blocks has, just like this. All right, pretty cool. However, we can't really tell how long they're lasting on the screen because they're kind of bouncing off the floor. Let's change our bounce strength to zero, collision everything to zero, and collision end to stay. So that means they'll just kind of plop onto the ground here and they'll stay there. All right. Now, we probably actually want to decrease our illumination scale for this to maybe like 0 0.5, since we're going to be having a lot more on the screen. And uh, you can see right now, the lifetime is set to minimum 3 seconds, maximum 4 seconds. Let's change that to a value of maybe like 10 seconds, all right? Minimum 10 seconds, maximum of 10 seconds. Uh, when we do that, we also need to make sure that our quota at the top here, under emitter settings, is set to something more than 80, Okay. And our emit rate, maybe we'll change that to a value of 50. And we'll change our quota to maybe 500, all right? So now what's going to happen is we're going to have all these blocks appear on the screen, and they're just going to kind of just sit there, all right? You can go through your cool little Tetris world like this. All right, so that's kind of just basic life. Lifetime is a fairly simple concept. They'll stay around for as long as you want them to stay around. You always have to consider the quota and the emit rate, though, as well. Okay, now let's take a look at simple rotation. Now to find the uh, learning sample for that, you can go into, under learning samples, functions, particle settings, and you'll find this particle rotation, which I'm going to add to my scene there. Use our W hotkey to bring it up like this, and let's just shift S to simulate. All right, we have this 
recycling symbol rotating counterclockwise. Let's go to our part of our popcorn tab rather and change our uh, blend mode to additive. So you can see the nice blue uh, symbol right there. Okay, let's uh, minimize our particle mode and particle and go down to particle settings now. Now the first thing I want to do is go into basic attributes. I want to change my lifetime minimum and maximum to a value of uh, three because we don't want to wait for 99 seconds every time we change an attribute for it to restart again. So we'll just set that to three, shift S to end the simulation and shift S to start again. Now every three seconds, we should have a refreshed symbol. All right, there we go. Or a refreshed particle effect, I should say. All right, so the uh, parameters or attributes we're looking at right now are under rotation here. Uh, we're not gonna worry about initial angle, minimum, initial angle, maximum for rotation. Uh, we're gonna talk now about velocity minimum and velocity maximum. You can see they're both set to three. So every time this uh, sprite appears on the screen, it's gonna rotate out of, at a speed of three. If you change your velocity max to something like 10, then every time it appears, it'll choose a random number between three and 10. You can see that's probably about a, a nine or a 10. Uh, it's rotating a lot faster. That's maybe an eight or something like that. Okay, so keep that in mind. It'll choose a random number between the minimum and the maximum values you set. You can also set them to, uh, to negative values, like a negative two, for example, and a three. If you do that, it'll randomly choose a value between negative two and negative three. So now it's positive one going this way, and it can maybe choose negative one the next time, okay? And you can just choose, uh, you know, negative one and a value of negative one, and then we'll just rotate uh, counterclockwise every time. Okay, just keep that in mind. You can have a minimum and a maximum velocity. I'm gonna set them both to one here. And let's take a look at rotation speed increment now. So uh, rotation speed increment, if, if we increase that to one, your velocity will, will be, be the same at the beginning. But then if your rotational speed increment is set at one, you'll see it'll gradually increase in speed as the lifetime progresses. So it starts off slow and gets a little bit faster. If we had a longer lifetime uh, for our particle, you could see it progress even further, okay? But that's basically what that means. Now, if you have a low value like one and one, and you set this rotational speed increment to negative one, it'll actually stop midway and start rotating the other direction, okay? So you can actually you know, adjust the value here, and when it appears on the screen, you can pause it or reverse it using this rotation speed increment. And let's take a look at a real world example here. Under texture emitter, I'm gonna choose this cool looking nightclub laser one, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, W bring that up to uh, the middle of our scene here. And for this one, we're going to turn out the lights. Since we are in a nightclub, we have to make it a bit darker. So let's go to our scene tab here and uh, make those lights invisible. Select our nightclub laser and shift S to simulate. All right. Apologies if anyone is, uh, you know, prone to seizures or anything like that. You may want to look away. I probably should have warned you earlier, but uh, yeah, flashing lights everywhere in this one. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my popcorn effects tab first and let's change our additive, let's change our glow self-illumination down to a, a lower value so it's not so saturated so we can actually see the lines a bit better. And we can actually go up here, uh, whoops, to our uh, emitter settings. And uh, I think we're good right there. Yeah, we'll just leave all these the way they are in particle mode. Maybe we can, uh, under particle, we can change our additive 32 map. The strength is at two and we'll just change that to one for exposure bloom. So the lines are a bit more even. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're just randomly generating almost like strobe light, uh, strobe like lights, uh, beams, zoom, uh, you know, emitting from this emitter in the middle there. And they're like that because if we go to basic attributes, our lifetime max is only set to value of one. Okay, and they're just randomly shooting out. We have currently have no rotation set. So rotation set to zero, zero. They're just randomly emitting and then disappearing right off the bat. Now, say, for example, we wanted to change this more to like a laser type show as opposed to the strobe lights. What we can do is let's change our max value to maybe a value of like seven or something like that. And let's change our min value to seven as well. Okay, we want consistent uh, lights that last for seven seconds. Okay, and let's just change our quota a little bit uh, higher as well. So, okay, we have a value of 10. All right, just so we can kind of see these lights. I don't want you to be overwhelmed by the light. Okay, and let's actually go down here as well. I wanted to mention something. Uh, we can actually change global scale. Now, keep in mind that when you adjust the global scale, you're actually modifying all these other values as well. So if your global scale goes up, you're increasing these other values and uh, the global scale goes down. Let's just change it to maybe a value of one just to get a bit more of a, a refined look. Okay, there we go. Now onto the rotation, what we we're talking about before. Okay, so rotation here, we can have uh, you know angular velocity. Let's change it to a value of like two and uh, two, for example. And so now these lights, 
they're going to start rotating counterclockwise at a speed of two. Let's change that to one because they're going a little bit fast. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, of course you can increase the speed amount just like this. So they'll start going faster and faster. Okay. As we move along, they start at one and then they go faster as time progresses. So they get faster and faster and faster. All right. But we'll just take this uh, back down to zero here and let's change our other value to maybe like a negative one. Okay. So now we'll have some that appear and, you know, go off in this direction and others that go off in the other direction. Okay, pretty cool stuff. All right, the last example I'm gonna give you is the lifetime color example. So this is under particle settings as well. And uh, we have this one here, lifetime color. Let's bring that in. And this one's fairly easy to explain. Uh, Shift S to simulate again. If we go to our popcorn effects tab, you can see under lifetime, we have a start color of blue, a mid color of green, and an end color of red. And those correspond to the beginning, middle, and end of our particle's life uh, from, from the point of emission here. We can change those colors to whatever we want, really. Um, let's change, change our start color to uh, red. So now we're starting, starting and ending with red. We change our end color to blue. Then we'll be ending with blue. All right, so fairly simple. However, there's one important, one important attribute here to keep in mind is the midpoint ratio. If we increase this to a higher value, You'll notice that we're using only the red and the green, all right? So we don't have much blue at the end. So if we increase our midpoint ratio to that amount right there, there you go. If we decrease it, then we're using more of the blues and the greens. So we're using more of these two uh, colors right here. Okay, so pretty standard, pretty straightforward. You can change the width and the height of all these things if you want. Uh, okay, so in the middle, you can change the width. Let's change our midpoint ratio to a minimum value there. So, okay, you know, you don't, you don't want to go too crazy with these, but, you know, in the middle, if we wanted more elongated, we can put these, the middle width, that value of three, uh, middle height, the value of one, if we want them to be even more, you know, start in a circle, in the middle, it's kind of like oval, in the end, it's a circle as well, all right? So, you know, fairly simple, straightforward stuff. You can also change the opacity. If you want the middle opacity to be stronger, you can see the change right there, very weak middle opacity, Okay. So these values can all be changed. Let's take a look at an example here using uh, something a lot cooler, which is fire. All right, so texture emitter again under applications, we're gonna use this flame example here. Uh, for this one, let's also uh, take, take off our lights uh, so we can just uh, put those two invisible. And I'm gonna shift S to start that simulation there. Let's actually make our dummy invisible as well since we don't want this dummy in the middle there causing some weird distortion. All right, now the couple things I want to do here, uh, right off the bat, let's go to our particles here. I believe we are using the Sprite Atlas, yeah, additive again. So this one right here, we can change that global illumination again. It's a little bit high for me. Let's tone it down a little bit, maybe something maybe a bit more reasonable like this. And uh, let's also add some exposure bloom. All right, so when you do that, you can get a bit more bloom for the interior of the fire to make it a bit more, uh, you know, not as stringy. It really depends on the effect you want. You can have it, you know, very bloomy or you can have it very uh, stringy. I like to have a happy medium just like this. All right, so let's take a look now at the, uh, the lifetime values here. You can see they're all set to red. If we wanted to make this fire seem a bit more like white hot, then our start color, we'd want to change our start color to something like a very high white color. Okay, so you can see it's like a very, seems like a much stronger flame. All right. And uh, the middle color uh, can stay red. Maybe the end color we can change to a darker color, like, a, like maybe a darker uh, yellow, almost like a, a greenish or a brownish, maybe something like that. All right, so you can have it, you know, much uh, more faded out. And uh, there you go. All right, now if you want here, you can increase or decrease the midpoint ratio again. So have, make it a bit more intense by increasing our midpoint ratio. And there you go and have a much more fiery and white hot fire by in increasing the midpoint ratio there. All right, so that's really all there is to it. Again, thanks so much for watching. We have this nice warm fire to warm us through the winter. Uh, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and our other popcorn effects videos on our YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video.